Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use Firebase Authentication version nine in your very own React.js project. We're gonna be using React Router DOM. We're gonna be using a lot of really cool things. We're gonna have pre uh, protected routes to where you can only be able to, you have to be signed in to be able to view these pages. And we're gonna be able to create a new user. We're gonna be able to sign in a new user, log out, like I said, the protected routes. We're gonna be using Tailwind for the entire UI and styling of this application. So if you're ready to get started, I'm gonna show you how to do it for absolutely from the beginning. I'm gonna show you how to configure fire, uh, Firebase, Tailwind, everything. So without further ado, let's get started. So here we are VS code, right? I'm going to open up my terminal here and I'm going to go ahead and change over to my desktop and then let's go ahead and create a react app. I'm going to be using yarn. You can use whatever you'd like. So create react app and I'm going to call this Firebase auth YouTube. Okay. All right, here we are. It says happy hacking. That means we're ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and pull over my Firebase auth YouTube. And let's just start this server up right off the bat here. So yarn start, npm start for using npm. I'm super pumped for this video, guys. There's a lot of really good information on uh, Firebase uh, version eight, a lot of namespace, but this new modular way is really, really awesome. And I didn't really find a whole lot of really great content on it. So that's why I'm doing this video. So hopefully I can save you some time using Firebase. So here we are, just a basic create React app. Um, we're gonna be working out of this source folder and all these files kind of gets confusing. So let's go ahead and clean this up a bit. The app.cs, CS, S, and app.test, the logo SVG, report web vitals, and setup test. Let's just go ahead and get rid of all those. Um, we're going to leave the app.js. Make sure you leave the index.css and also the index.js, of course. And in this index.js, I'm going to go ahead and delete some things. This is why we're getting those errors on the screen. And then app.js, let's just get rid of all this. And I'm just going to import React. From React. Cool. So now we should be able to, to uh, type and see some text over here. It's working, it's working. So first things, whoops, first thing I want to do is go ahead and let's go ahead and install Tailwind. So I'm going to go ahead and cruise on over to tailwindcss.com. Click on that get started button. Frameworks guide. Going to create React app. Here we go. First thing it wants us to do is create a React app. We've already done that. So down here on step two, I'm just going to copy this, right? So, and let's open up just new. Uh, a little terminal there say yarn add go ahead and paste that in all right and the next thing we want to run this npx command what this npx command is going to do is, is create us our tailwind config file over here boom and in there is very important because we need to pay attention to this content array because the next step it wants us to copy this into the content array and this is how it's going to build our um build our project and the next are directives. We just need to copy that in to the index.css file. So we can just go and replace all the um, basic styling there. And we can close index.css. We'll close the tailwind config file. We don't need that. In this index.js, we can go ahead and um, close that. So let's have a look at our server here. Boom. Let's go ahead and inspect. I like to keep my console open. And okay, it's talking about React. React Router DOM. So this is React Router DOM version 18. Um, we can go ahead and make the update real quick. It's super fast if you guys are interested. So let's go into the um, index.js. Okay, so a couple changes here right off the bat. I'm not going to go into it, but just to update it here, let's say client. And we actually need to run a couple commands. What are these commands? Let's see if I can remember here. Okay. I have it written down here. Yarn add, and we'll say react at 18. And we also want to grab the react DOM at 18. Boom, go ahead and hit enter. Give some room there. Then next we just wanna, basically we're gonna rewrite all of this right here, okay? So I'm gonna say const root, I have this off to the side here in my notes. We'll say react dom dot create root. All right, and then we're just gonna say document dot get element by D. And we are grabbing the root. Boom, there we go. And then we just wanna say root dot render. And then here we can render our app. Boom, there we go. Now I'll go ahead and hit save. Uh, so we are gonna be using React Router DOM version six. Like I said, we're gonna have some protected routes. We're gonna have a sign in page. We're gonna have a sign um, sign up, sign in. We're gonna have an account page and the account page is gonna be a protected route. So we're gonna use um, React Router DOM to, uh, for our navigation in here. So let's go ahead and um, install that. So I'm gonna say yarn add React Router DOM. Go ahead and hit enter there. And so for React Router DOM, if you're not familiar, basically we need to wrap our entire application in what's called a browser router. So we're gonna do that in here. So I'm gonna give a couple spaces here. So what I'm gonna say is browser 
router, boom, already has me in there, perfect. And we can just copy this up here. Boom, go ahead and hit save and that should, so we need to import browser router. That's probably what it's looking at here. Mm. Oh, we already imported browser router. What's it complaining at? Okay, we le left off that bracket there. All right, whoops. Okay, go ahead and hit save, there we go. So we wrap the package and uh, wrap, wrap the app component in the browser router. Sometimes you'll just see uh, what's called just router here and um, you can do that, it's fine. It doesn't really matter. People like to do that to save time. You just have to say browser router as router. Um, but you know, what? I'm just gonna leave it as browser router just so there's no um, just so there's no confusion here. So browser browser router just like so. Okay. Oop, have a little semicolon in there. Okay, so now we're pretty much done with the index.js uh, file here. So let's close that. And next, let's go ahead and install Tailwind. So let's cruise on over, or sorry, we just installed Tailwind. Sorry about that. So let's go ahead and create our components, right? So we're, like I said, we're gonna have, I'm gonna have a components folder. And in the components folder, what we're gonna have is our, we're gonna have a, we'll have a sign in.jsx. We'll have a sign up.jsx, okay. And let's just have an account page. Account page, got JSX, okay. And I'm gonna go and drop that down. R-A-F-C-E, it's gonna generate my functional components here. Boom, boom, boom. R-A-F-C-E, great. So let's uh, let's close the sign in and the account page. I don't want a bunch of tabs open. And let's go ahead and kind of set up our routes here. So what I'm gonna do also, I'm gonna kind of copy over just a couple things here. Um, that we're gonna grab here. So basically I want an H1 in here. And I'm not gonna go over um, Tailwind. That's not what this is about. I do have a lit video if you wanna learn some Tailwind. Um, it's not grabbing our styles. We probably just need to restart our server here. So after, if you start up your server and you then install Tailwind, it's not gonna work properly. You're gonna have to, you're gonna have to restart it first. So this should actually be styled, um, put in the middle of the screen, text 3L, font bold. So let's see if it, boom, there it goes. So that's what we want right there, you guys. Um, so next, let's set up our routes, like I said. So we're gonna have, for React Router DOM, we're gonna surround everything in uh, routes. Uh, then we're gonna have individual route in here. And the, this is gonna be a path. Um, so for our homepage, right, this is our homepage. And what I want to show at the homepage is just a login component. So whenever they come into the homepage, we're just gonna have, sorry, we actually need to put element here. Element, and we wrap this like so. There we go. Geez there. Um, and let's just put here our uh, login component. Oh, it won't let us auto import it, that's fine. Let's go ahead and import it at the top here. Import login from, oh no, I need to go in components. And then, or sorry, I didn't even call it login. Sorry about that. Sign in is what the issue was. I call that sign in. There it is. And so you also let's have a sign up. So I'm just gonna copy this down. I'm gonna copy it down twice. So for the next one, I want this route to be sign up, okay? And we'll just change this to our sign up component. Make sure it auto imports, there we go. And then for this la last one here, this is gonna be our protected route, but we'll come back and take care of that in a little bit here. And this one is just gonna be account. So, okay, it's not gonna let us auto import that. So let's just go ahead and grab that import account from components account there we go and we need to change this so we don't get any errors so let's go ahead and save routes okay we need to import routes and then also routes as well so i'm just pressing the real cool trick you guys if you press the control and the spacebar button at the end of the component you um, bring up a list of options in which case we can just auto import it just like that boom so that looks like it's taking care of all of our errors. Let's go ahead and refresh this. Cool, so this is our sign-in page. Now for our sign-in page, you guys, what I'm gonna do, um, I'm just gonna kind of cop over, copy over some styles. Um, let's go into our sign, sorry, let's go to our sign up page here. And I don't wanna make this tutorial too long, doing a bunch of classes, but basically I'll, I'll describe it as we go. So what we want it to have is a max width of 700 pixels here. And this is on the sign-in, remember this is our home page. So if we go over to sign up, boom, this is our sign-up page. And uh, we can see if we type some text in there. 
Move that error. Boom. So what I'm saying real quick, max width of 700 pixels and then um, margin X on the X axis is auto. And then a little bit of margin on the, on the top and bottom and a padding of four. Okay. So, and if you're wondering what these brackets are really, really cool and uh, tailwind, if you, um, if you don't have the numbers, a lot of times you'll say max width dash, uh, dash 20, for example, and that's, um, uh, it's not going to show us what that is. It might be a little bit too big, but if you open up some brackets, basically you can put some custom values in there. You can kind of declare your own va values, whether it's pixels, rim, percentages, anything like that. So that's our uh, outer container there. Next, we're going to have a div here. So I'm going to create a div. No class on that. And then for this H1, I'm going to paste it. It's just going to say sign in to your account. And then next, I'm going to have a P tag. Boom, P tag. I'm going to close that off. And it's going to say, don't have an account. And then we're going to have a sign, sign up. There we go. So, and we want this link to go to our sign up page. Or sorry, this is our sign up page. So we'll say for this sign up, already have an account, then sign in. Okay. And for this here, what I want to do is actually I want that to be underline. So I'm going to give this a link. So this is going to be a link. We want it to link to our homepage, which is the sign in component. So we'll say link to, and I'm just gonna put that to the home page. There we go, and we'll close that off. I'm gonna just drop this down. So what I wanna do is just copy this little sign in there, and I'm gonna paste it in there. Link is not defined, that's cool. We just need to import link, and it's coming from React Router DOM. There we go. And let's see if we can, I think we can style on this here. I'm not sure. Cool, yeah, there we go. And so if we click this, it's gonna to go to our, um, pay attention there, boom, there we go. Now we're at our homepage. So, but let's go back to what we're doing on our signup page, because after this P tag, um, we're gonna go outside of that div, we're gonna have our form here. So we're gonna have our form, and we don't need an action or anything like that. Boom, then inside our form, what we're gonna have here is a, see here, gonna have a div. I'll just type it out here div here and we're gonna have a label boom and i don't need any of this html4 stuff not for this video and i'm just gonna say email address boom there we go and then we're gonna have an input and this is gonna be for our email and again we don't need this name id stuff um and i'm not even gonna put a placeholder for this you guys and then i'm gonna have a basically i'm just gonna copy this down make it easy here and this one is just gonna be uh enter we we'll just say password, password, boom. Instead of type uh, email, we're going to want that to be a password, okay? And then I do want to have a button in here. There we go. And we'll just say sign, sign up. And looks like we're missing, oh, I'm missing a div in here, the form. Oh, that's funky. Boom, there we go. So that should take care of that. So there are, so you can't really see them because of Tailwind, how Tailwind, Tailwind configures everything. Um, but don't worry about it. I'm going to add in some classes right now. So for this div right here, we're actually going to do uh, both the same here. We're going to have flex, flex column. We're giving just a little bit of padding. There we go. Next, I'm going to grab some styling for our labels and actually if you click right here and you hold down the alt button or the option button if you're on a Mac so you can actually type in multiple places at the same time so it's just going to save us a little bit of time while we're coding and what we're saying here we're padding a two and we're giving it a font medium so just a slight little bold there the next we're going to want to style our input right so for our input tailwind uh comes right out the box with um like base base styling like almost nothing it makes it really really customizable it's an awesome feature um i love it so what we can do is oh actually i wanted that put that class name i put this on the wrong spot here so for this i actually want border p3 and i'm going to go ahead and type that in there so i want border then padding of three and then on this label i got it right on this one i just put it in the wrong spot here there we go. So now our, our form's kind of coming together here. It's looking good. Let's get our button our button next here. Um, and button, here we go. Let's get our class name here on the button. 
Boom, there we go. Perfect, perfect. So what I'm saying on the button, uh, border, I'm defining border, and then say the border is blue, 500. The higher the number you go, the darker it gets. 900 is going to be really, really dark. 100 is going to be very, very light. So, um, and what I'm saying is here, hover, whenever we go on hover, it drops down a shade. Boom, as you can see that right there. The width is full. Then a little bit, just a little bit of padding and margin, text white, right? So what I want to do, this is our sign up component. Now the login component is going to be very, 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 very similar. Um, see, click here, log in, boom. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to copy this, right? This entire div, I'm just going to copy that. Now let's go over to our sign in, boom, there we go. And let's just paste right over that thing, okay? And instead of sign in, okay, yeah, link, it wants us to import that. So let's go ahead and, and make a React happy there. We'll import that. And now instead of sign in to your account, I'll say sign up for a free account. There we go. Oh, damn it. Sorry. This is the sign in run, right? So I'm just going to come back in here and I'm going to say sign up. Sorry for the confusion there, guys. Sign up for a free account because we styled our sign up component first. So for our signing component, sign, we'll just say sign in. Just like we had it, sign in to your account. Boom, there we go. Okay, then we'll say here, don't have an account yet, sign up. Boom. So, and then we'll just change this to the sign up page. Cool. So now we can go to the sign up page up there. Boom. And then go sign in, takes us back to our home page because that's where our login component is. And we probably want to just change that just so it, um, I'm going to save it so it formats here. Just so it makes sense, we want to sign in. Cool. So, and then we do have, let's just make our account page. Um, let's go to our account page really quick uh, just to style it. It's going to be really, really simple, you guys. Um, basically, I'm just going to copy over the styling here. So, what I want up here is whoop, max width, 600 pixels, uh, margin, auto, then a little bit of padding in between there. And then we're going to have an H1 that says account. And in this H1, I'm just gonna give it a little bit of styling here. So text to Excel, font bold, PY4. And let's just cruise on over to our account page. I don't have a link to get there. We're gonna set up um, kind of automatic forwarding. It's called a navigate in React Router DOM. So we're gonna set that up too. It's gonna be super awesome there. And then let's just have a little P tag here. And we'll just say uh, user email and we'll so when we log in we'll be able to display our user email right there um for now i'm just gonna leave that blank and let's just have a button here that says log out it's not gonna have any functionality yet but we're gonna come back and hook everything up with firebase firebase authentication boom so border px6 py2 and a little bit of margin cool so done do anything let's go back to our you know what let's go back the next step is probably to let's install Firebase and then we'll move on to the context. Like I said, yes, we will be using context for um, smart virus state management here, authentication. Uh, it's really, really great. So let's go over to Firebase. Boom, there we go. And what I want to go to, let's go here. Okay, Firebase. I'm going to click on Get Started. And what I want to do, these are some other projects. Let's create a new project. And in our new project, I'm going to call this Firebase Auth YT for YouTube. And what it's asking here, I'll open the screen up a little bit. Uh, do we want to um, incorporate Google Analytics? No, it's going to add some extra code in there. And I don't want to confuse anything. So just go ahead and create your application here. It takes just a minute, guys, pretty quick. A little quick water break. Smash the like button, you guys. If this is the first time using Firebase authentication, smash the like button. It's going to be awesome. All right. Our project is ready. Cool. Let's get continue. So this is the screen you're going to come into. This is kind of just like the console screen for Firebase, right? So off here, we have some of their... Um, some of their tools we can use like authentication, uh, Firebase, um, this is like Firestore, if it's like cloud storage, and then also do some hosting. So I'm also in the next video, I'm gonna show you how that we can like store user data as well. It's gonna be really awesome. So go ahead and if you didn't see what I clicked there, this is the iOS, this is Android, this is for web since we're building on a, on a, on a online here. So just click that web button. And next we have to set up our app. So I'm just gonna call this, I'll say auth. YT for YouTube, go ahead and register app. Um, I'm not going to be hosting it right now, so don't mind that. So it's going to generate some code for us to use. There we go. So first it wants us to install Firebase. Go ahead and copy this whole thing for using NPM. 
if you're like me and you're using yarn, yarn, let's go ahead and copy that and say yarn add Firebase. Boom, there you go. Now next we need to copy this, right? So go ahead and copy this. Don't copy mine, you guys. Don't copy this uh, API key because it's not going to work, okay? I'm going to close this right after I uh, record this video. This is um, private stuff that you don't want to share with anybody. So if you're going to deploy your application, you definitely want to hide this in a .env file or, or something like that because you definitely don't want the public getting your uh, API key information. It could get uh, very messy. So... Okay, so we installed Firebase, and we can check and see in our package. Boom, there it is. So um, next, we're going to want to create a Firebase.js file, and that is going to be in our source folder, okay? So Firebase.js, boom. And what I just copied all this, I'm just going to paste it right in here. And Firebase is really, really awesome. It lets us uh, basically install these... Um, software development kits, the SDKs as tools, and that's what we're gonna do, and I'm gonna show you how to do all that. So down here, when you come down here, and what we wanna do is export default app, and then what we wanna do, one of these SDKs we wanna bring in, I'm gonna search for it. So I could just copy it in here, but you guys, I wanna try and show you how, how to learn this stuff and not just copying a tutorial, okay, if that makes any sense. Um, because that's a really, really key part in becoming a, a developer, right? Is learning how to teach yourself instead of just watching tutorials all the time. So what I did, I just clicked authentication here, okay? And what it's, okay, sign-in method. What we're going to do in this video, I'm just using email and password. Uh, Firebase authentication has really, really cool things. You can sign in with your Google account, Facebook. Um, I don't even know what that is really, but um, really, really cool ways to sign in. And they're all pretty simple to implicate. So I'm going to show you how to do them. For this video, we're just using email and password. So go ahead and click enable. I'm not going to use this one. I'm going to go ahead and click save. Okay. So like I said, to sh teach you how to teach yourself, right? So what are we going to do? I'm going to go to these docs, right? And what we want to use is authentication. So where am I looking? So this is the documentation side of Firebase. And it's set up really cool. It's basically just like the the console area right that's where that's how it's laid out and then so what we want we're doing authentication so i just click on that boom and you can look through there but i know where we want to look here is the web right and then i'm going to click on getting started so we're talking about these sdks right and this is what we want to import right here the get auth we're using firebase auth if you're using db you, you know you go down there and look at the db and such so on and so forth so this is what we're doing and you may see some other tutorials with this namespace way of importing and initializing stuff, right? And that there's a lot of really, really great tutorials. However, this is the Firebase version nine, so it's a slightly updated way. And if you try and import things the same way, then you'll, you're gonna get a lot of errors. So that's why I'm creating this video, guys. Awesome stuff here. So go ahead and copy this, import and get auth, okay? And we're gonna paste that right here at the top. And then down here, we can just copy that, and I'm just gonna paste it right here. And what I want to do is actually want to export this because we want it to be available elsewhere, right? So that's all we need to do for the Firebase, um, for our Firebase.js. So the next, the next thing we need to do is actually, um, actually set up our, our user authentication or, or sorry, our context. So let's go ahead and go into I'm bringing this up a bit. So for our context, basically, if you're not familiar with context, basically, in my opinion, it's a, it's a similar simpler, similar and simpler version, the uh, option for, for Redux, right? And context is very, very easy to implicate. It's, um, it's a lot easier to understand. And also it's great for things like um, if you visit their documentation for, for, if you have a lot of state, that's not gonna be making constant changes. For example, authentication, uh, light theme, dark theme, uh, UI, stuff like that. So we can close this account right there. And so, okay, let's go in here and we're gonna put a context folder and I'm gonna have that just kind of here next in our source folder. So context, boom. And then for our context folder, I'm gonna create a file and I'm just gonna call it auth context.js. So there's a lot of way to a lot of ways to to implement context and uh, basically if you if you Google it, you're gonna find uh, like a hundred different ways. So just find a way that works for you. Um, this is how this is how I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna close this down a little bit. There we go. And what we just create here, Firebase Auth. This is, one, this is the one we're working in here, so. All right, so, oh, okay, okay. So what we need to do, at first we need to import, put it in some brackets, create context, okay. 
from, and this is going to be just from React. I have my notes over here. So what we're going to want to do next is const, we're going to have a user context. And this is going to be equal to create context. There we go. And that is a function there. And then next, what we want to have, we're going to export this, export const, see auth context, context provider. And this is actually going to take in um, some uh, children, right? And we can go ahead and just leave that destructured so we don't have to deal with the props or anything like that. And it's just going to be an arrow function. There we go. Boom, there we go. Got this mic. I haven't got an arm stand yet for my mic, so I'm kind of leaning around it if you're wondering what I'm doing there. And then in here, what we want to do, um, basically, we just want to return here, and we're going to return user context provider. And in here, we're going to have the children. And this is also going to take in the value. And we're, this is where we're going to export all our, all our values, right? And then we also want to export const user auth and this is going to be an arrow function there we go and we'll just return and this is what's going to make our context context available user context that's what's going to make our context available throughout our application great so there we go um cool so for a few things that we're looking at like i said to teach you kind of how to how to search yourself right i'm going to bring this back open again. So let's go to the docs and a few things that we're going to be doing, right? We're going to have a sign in, a create new user function, a sign in function, a logout function, and then a couple more, but here's how we're going to look for it. Right? So like I said, we're in authentication here we're doing the web, get started. So basically it showed us how to import our auth, right? So now it's showing us how we create new users. Okay. And I'm not just going to copy this completely because my way is just a little bit different, but that's all right. So basically, this is the Firebase function to create a new user with email and password. So what I'm going to do here, and we're going to put all of this inside our auth context. So what I want to say in here, um, basically let's import, open up our curly brackets, and we're going to look for this in a, the Firebase project. So say Firebase.auth. And if we do this first, we kind of get previewed what we're looking for, right? So what we want to create, See, these are our previews here. Create user with email and password. We forgot the from keyword there. Well, okay, so we're gonna create a user with email and password. We're gonna want to sign in with an email and password. We're gonna want to sign out. We are also gonna want to have the on state, on auth state changed. And basically what that is, it's gonna check to see if we're logged in. And that way we can have protected routes and kind of have access to some of that information. So. I'm going to go ahead and I like it formatted like this when it gets real long, just so it's easy for, to read and it's easy for you guys to understand. Let me know in the comments if you're liking this, if you're getting some value out of it. I know let's about, we're about to dive in right now with the context and Firebase this is where it's getting fun right here. Okay. Okay. So there we go. So what we want to do, and we're going to take in an auth an email and a password. And I'm going to show you where we're going to grab all those. So, what we need to do here. So for our create user, right? This is what we're going to focus on first, this create user function. So we're going to put this inside of our auth context provider. Boom, right in here. So we're going to put this kind of at the top. So what we're going to have, and I'm going to have, um, I'm going to have, a, it's going to be an arrow function. So const, I'm going to call this uh, create user. I would call it sign in. Then we have some conflicting uh, names there in Firebase or React doesn't like that. So create user, right? And what we want to pass in is an email and also a password. And then whoops, once we're inside here, what we want to do is just return. And what we want to return is the uh, create user with email and password. And it's going to take an auth and then also email and password. And then the value property down here, uh, right here in this children, this value property, this is where we're going to export our functions. So what we want to export is create user, boom, like that. So everything's looking good so far. This is what we want. Um, and we're also, see, we need to import auth from Firebase. That's one thing we left out here. So import auth from, we need it from our 
Okay, you need to go outside our current directory into Firebase. Boom. There we go. Looking good, looking good. All right, you guys. So now I assume we have this set up correctly. We're about to see in a moment. Let's cruise on over to our sign up um, page here. This is our sign up component. And a few things that we want to do, we're going to be using the U state hook, right? So let's go ahead and set up our state for our email and our password. And we're also going to have an error state as well. So I'm going to say const and we're going to have an email and set email. Okay. And that's just going to be equal to U state. And it's going to set this to an empty string. And let's go ahead and copy this down a couple times. This next one is going to be password. And then we're going to have set password. There we go. And then let's do an error one so we can display some errors on the screen. And we'll also do some errors in the console as well. Boom. So next, let's go ahead and go into our, okay, our form is going to have a handle submit function. So let's go in here and say on submit. And on submit, we just want to call this handle submit function that we haven't created yet. So let's go into the first input. This is our email input inside of the form. So make sure everything's looking right. When I started recording this video, I realized about halfway through my mic was off. So on here, we're going to have an on change. And on this change, what we have is arrow function. And basically, we just want to set the email to uh, event target value. So that's what we're passing in there. And also here. So on change. And this is for our password. I'm going to say, there we go. And set password target value cool so um yeah 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 we need to import u state so let's go and i'm just going to click the control button boom auto auto import that don't need that stuff so handle submit let's go ahead and create our handle submit function const handle submit and this is actually going to be um it's actually going to be an asynchronous function so the way we do that for our arrow function i'm going to say async right there boom and Okay, so what we want to do uh, first off is, so whenever we submit our signup form, I do not actually want the page to submit. So I'm going to pass an event, e.prevent default. Okay, and then let's go ahead and set our error to an empty string. And then we want to have a try catch block, right? So, and then we want to catch one of the error, and then we'll just say um, set error, error.message. And let's go ahead and console. What is all that? Console.log, a.message. Okay. And this work, like I said, it's asynchronous function, so we just want to await. And what we want to await is the sign, what do we call this? Create user. Not that. No, it's just create user. So this is what we're grabbing right here, this uh, create user. And we have access to it. Because we exporting right here. Oh, hold on. I forgot some. I'm going to pass an email and password. But we need to import this, okay? So let's go ahead and import user context. And we're getting the user context. Or sorry, user auth. I got that wrong. User auth is what we need to import. User auth from, and that's our context file. So let's go find that. It's in our context. Boom. And real quick, before we left out a key step here, so create users not defined. I don't know, because that's because here. We haven't wrapped everything in our in our app component yet, but let's go ahead and we'll say const. And what we're grabbing is the create user, and that's equal to the user auth that we just brought in right here. So basically we're we have our function we're listing it as a value and then in here we can import our our function and then we have access to we have to set it here and now we have access to it but we don't actually yet because we missed a, a key point using using context so we need to go into our app.js and what we need to do is kind of um, surround our routes so you ideally want to wrap your entire application in here um, I'm just going to put it around my routes right here and what I wanted to say, I believe we're, we're looking, what we're looking for is the, uh, auth context provider right here. Right? So let's go in and we're saying auth context provider. Boom. There we go. And then these routes, I'm just going to copy that. So 
If I press the just the alt button, I can just scroll up there. Boom. All right, all right. So now we have we should have access to everything. So let's we can kind of close that. Let's go back into our sign up component here. All right, so now what we want to do is let's see if we can actually create a new account without anything breaking. Let's see if we did it with no errors. So, and here we are, uh, this are just our user table and authentication. So basically it's just a table of all your users. It's empty because we don't have any there yet. So let's create our first user test at test.com. And I'm just say one, two, three. So Firebase has some really cool um, security features, like a certain uh, minimum length on a password. So I'm just gonna see, we should be getting a uh, password. Or sorry, that was the login page. Let's go to sign up page. And well, it looks like we got an error here. A sign up page type error, user context is not a function. So that's gonna be, okay, let's go into our auth context and the user context equals create context. That's right and user context return. Okay, you guys, this maybe use context. I think that's the issue. Yeah, we need to import that. Boom. Make sure you import use context and let's see, still got an error. Let's refresh. Okay, we're refreshed. Let's try this again. Test at test.com. I'm just gonna type pass, P-A-S-S, -S, sign up. Okay, so that's good. That's why we weren't there. We have Firebase. Password should be at least six characters. You are weak. You are weak. So instead of pass, let's just say password. Go ahead and hit enter. And okay, and it's okay. Nothing happened. That's good. And if you hit it again, it gives you an error. You, uh, you're already in use. So let's go over to our table. Let's refresh this. Hey, there we go. So there is our email, test at test.com. Perfect. Has a little information. I'm going to show you some more information here in a minute. So that's cool. So now it'd be really cool to, um, we want to do a few things. So let's have, let's have, um, whenever we log in or sign up for a new account, it doesn't make any sense. Just sit at the same sign up account, right? So let's use, let's come over here into our sign up, and we'll use the use navigate and rack router dom. So let's just go and import that use navigate. And then here we can just say, whoops, come down here. I'll say const navigate and that can be equal to use navigate. And then in here, right after, um, right after creator user, I'm just say navigate to bang the homepage, which is login or actually let's go to the account page. Whenever we create a new uh, account, we want to be automatically redirected to the account page. So let's try this again. I'll say test, test one, same password and should. Oh, okay. Okay. Let's refresh. I had the same value in there. Let's say, um, test me at gmail.com password and invalid, invalid hook call. So what are we saying here? Navigate. Okay. So what is it not like? We have the use navigate equal. Okay, this is a function. Boom. There we go. Damn. Okay, let's try this again. I'll say test at um, gmail.com and then password. And what happens? Boom. Okay, perfect. It moved us to our account page. That's perfect. So we eventually want to set this up as a restricted account. So let's go ahead and... Um, Let's go ahead and implement the on off state change. So actually when we log in here or we sign up, sign up for a new account or log in, we want to be able to see our user email here. Right. And, and that's in our account page. So first let's close this sign up page. So for our auth context, what we want to do is actually, we're going to, we're going to be using the on off state change. We're actually going to put this in a, uh, in a use effect, right? Cause we only want it to run once when the, when the component mounts. So, and I'm going to put this just above my return here. And so we're going to have a, um, sorry, use effect. All right. And yes, that's going to take an arrow function. And then we're going to have our dependency away because we only want this to run once, like I said. Okay. And in here, we're not going to pass in anything, but what we want to say is actually const unsubscribe. That's going to be equal to, and then we're going to have our on auth state change. Now we brought this in here from firebase. .auth, so that's what we're grabbing right there. And on auth, state change, what we want to have is uh, we want to pass an auth and then an actually um, an arrow function. And in here, we're going to have the uh, current user. 
we can spell this whatever whatever we like there. Current current user. And current user is um, a kind of feature of Firebase where we actually have access to the basic like email. And whenever we create um, a new account with Firebase authentication, you actually get a user ID, unique user ID. You have um, basically uh, like a URL, pic picture URL, kind of like an avatar, um, all these extra options, right? So in there, we're gonna pass in the arrow function, right? And we just wanna say, this is really cool. I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna console.log a new user, and we actually have to set some state. So let's set our state real quick. This is gonna be inside this right here, right? Inside our auth context provider. Make sure you put your state in here, otherwise you won't have access to it. So I wanna say user and set user equal to use state. And this is gonna be an object, okay? Make sure that's an object, because that's what we're gonna be getting back here. So we wanna console.log user and let's set, I'm gonna set, user to current user and actually actually what we want right here as well and then down here we want to <clears throat> excuse me return 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 um it's gonna be an arrow function here and just uh unsubscribe there and it's gonna be a function so let's go ahead and save use effect is not defined Import that. Oh no, what did I do? I jacked that one up. Let's just go ahead and manually import it. We don't want any extra bugs. No more bugs. So use state and the use context. Okay. Oh, I saw that. So let's just do our use state as well. Cool. Go ahead and give that a save. Okay, cool. So this is, I'm going to refresh this. So this is what I was talking. This is the object that we get back when you create an account with Firebase authentication with the uh, create user, uh, sorry, create user with email and password. So we have display names automatically set to null, but this is our email, right? That's our email that we use right there. Email verified. Basically they have an option to send you a verification email. That'd be really cool to go over. If you guys want me to make a video on that, I can do so. And this is our unique user ID right there. Boom. A little photo URL. So phone number, lots of information here. Um, so let's display our email right there, right? So let's go into our account page. And to do that, remember to have access to that, we actually have to bring in import and it was auth, dang it, I always forget. It is what we bring in, user auth, okay? So user auth, and this is from our context, boom, slash. Okay, then remember how we need to bring it in here. We need to say const and the, um, we're looking for the, what are we looking for? User, right? And also let's have a logout button. So user and also logout. We don't have the logout uh, functionality yet. And that's gonna be equal to user auth. Cool, function, the user auth function. There we go. So next we can actually have uh, access to the user so I'm gonna open up my curly brackets here so I can just type some JavaScript down here. And what I wanna say is um, basically, if user is true, we wanna display user dot email and we're saying dot email because that's how we access it right there. So let's go ahead and refresh. Is it working? No, what's going on here? User, user at email. So let's uh, if I list anything out here. Um, we need our auth for our logout. Let's leave our logout alone. Um, oh, you know what we, okay. Uh, key point here, we did not pass through our value to our value down here. And that's something you have to do when you're using context. So along with this create user, what we also created was the um, this user right here. So we need to make sure that we pass that out there. User, boom. All right, so user of, it's given. Okay, so refresh, there we go. So now we are signed in as our user, boom. So as you can see now, we, and we, so just to, ref, to clarify, why it wasn't working is we weren't passing in um, our use effect uh, function here. So after we passed that in, we now had access to it because basically it was trying to look for it and it didn't, we didn't, um, we didn't export it, so we didn't have access to it. So now we have it displayed on on, on the screen here. And basically we're saying, uh, if there is a user, it's going to display, and if not, then it won't display at all, which is kind of relevant. But this page is going to be this page is going to be uh, um, what you call password protected, uh, you know, uh, protected route. So, but let's go ahead and have our logout button here. That'd be cool, right? 
So let's do our auth context, right? So next, we already have our sign out. So what we wanna do here, we can just put it right here under the create user. So I'll say const, and I'm just gonna say, um, I'll just call it sign out like so, or let's call it log out. Log out, it's gonna be an arrow function. Um, and it's gonna be, all it's gonna take in is, uh, I believe it's just the auth, yeah. So return, return sign out, there it is. And we just wanna pass in the auth. And then let's go into our account page. Let's refresh that there. So for our account page, we'll say uh, on click here, we're gonna run a function. It just says handle log out. Cool, there we go. And then for our function, const handle log out. And you know, this is gonna be a uh, asynchronous function as well. So make sure we add async there. And then what we wanna say is, um, we're not gonna have to prevent a form from submitting or anything. All we can say is, um, what we're gonna say is, let's see our const log out. We want to call our, see, try catch. Catch, we won't take in our error. It was, um, I'm just gonna console log, because we're gonna set an error on this page. E dot message, there we go. And basically all we want to do here is await log out function. I think we might need to pass through the, uh, we're gonna need to pass through the, um, the auth on there. No, no, we don't. And we, so what we want to do when we log out, we don't want to hang out in this page. We want to get forwarded to so use our navigate, right? So navigate, whenever we log out, let's just go back to our homepage. Boom, lowercase there. And then we have, actually I want this to be use navigate. Boom, there we go. And so whenever we log out, we have to make a const for that. Well, for that so use navigate. So we'll go up here, say const navigate equal to use navigate and that's going to be a function there so whenever we log out basically we want it to forward us there and let's just give a little message so we know we know that we're logged out so we'll console you are logged out cool so and this should be returned to null so let's see if this works is it going to work log out log out is not a function do we pull this in so handle log out log out that's good so handle log out and do we export it do we do that same thing See, same thing. There we go. So we just gonna make sure log out. Now let's try it again. Let's refresh. Click this. No, you are logged out. Perfect. And it forward us to our sign in page. Perfect. That's what we want right there. Forward us to our home page. Great. So what's next? We have the on off state change. We have our sign up. We have our log out. Let's do our sign in. Okay. So I'm gonna close that right there. So next for our sign in, let's close that account. For our auth context, this is where we're gonna be right here. And I'm gonna throw this right above the logout and just below the create user, okay? So const, and this is what we're looking for. We're gonna have we're gonna have a sign in, like so, okay? And what we're looking for is a sign in with email and password. So, and again, it's gonna be an asynchronous function and we're, whoops. We're gonna be taking in some values, so. Let's make this, or sorry, this is an asynchronous, but we do need to take in email and password, okay? And then we want to return, we want to return the sign in with email and password. And remember, we're passing in auth and email and then also the password. And before we forget what I've been doing this entire time here, let's go down here and we want to pass this through. We're saying sign in, sign in, like so, boom, perfect. Now we have access to it. So let's look for our sign in component, there we go. And what we want to do um, first is again, we need to bring this in. All right. So before I forget, we're going to use this use navigate as well. So let's go ahead and bring that in. Use navigate, and then we're going to import the auth context. Or sorry, user auth. Dang, I keep getting it wrong. User auth, and again, boom, we're grabbing the user auth from right there. Okay. And so user auth is what we want there. And we're also gonna to wanna, to, what we're gonna to wanna to grab is the, um, we're gonna define that right there, right? So we'll say const, open up our brackets, gotta put this in brackets, and we're looking for our sign in equal to the user auth function, cool. So now, just like we did in the sign up, 
we basically just copied everything over for this component. So for our form, what we're gonna have is a, um, sorry, not a class name. We wanna on submit and then on submit, we want to handle submit. So we're gonna need a handle submit function. And then we're also gonna want our, uh, our use date, right? So let's go ahead and let's go into our sign up. And let's just copy all of this right here, dude. So we're copying the email, set email you state. We're copying the password, set password, and the error, and set error. And we already have all that over there. Cool. All right, I guess I could have grabbed that. Use navigate. So we'll say const navigate equal to use navigate. Cool. That's a function. All right. So now we have all our state in there. That's the way to do it. Um, yeah, okay, React. We'll import that. Boom. Import. All right, and the handle submit. Let's do the handle submit function. So const, we'll just say handle submit. Okay, boom. And this one we are gonna want to say e dot, not email, dot, pass this in there so it'll shut up. e dot prevent default, oh, come on. Come on, there we go. All right, yes, there we go. So prevent default, and let's go ahead and set um, set our error to just an empty string here. Okay, perfect. And then next, what we're gonna have the try catch block, right? So try, and then we're gonna catch, we're gonna catch any error, and we'll just set error, boom, to e dot message. And let's also console.log, I like to log that. So this is where, I'm gonna show you, I haven't displayed an error on the screen yet, but I'll show you how we're gonna do that. So boom, there we go. And for this, what we want it to asynchronous, right? So we're actually gonna wait. So let's put our async here. Async, there we go. And what we wanna wait for is the um, sign in. It's gonna have email and password. Okay. So are you ready to try this? Um, what do we have our first, I forget what we had that first, uh, test at test.com and I believe it was just password. I'm gonna go ahead and sign in. Are we gonna get any bugs? Invalid uh, auth, invalid email, okay. I can't remember what it is. So I'm just gonna sign up for a new account and I'm just gonna say um, email at test.com. It's gonna be password, boom. Go ahead and enter, email at test.com, right? So we're now we're on our sign in page. So email at test.com. Password is pass. Let me get this right. Password invalid error auth invalid email. Am I getting this right? Okay, so error auth invalid email. Why is my email invalid? Email set email. Uh, oh, duh. Okay, yes. <laughs> Sorry about that. Duh. Okay, we missed. We didn't have our on change. Uh, okay, so let's hit our on change. Sorry about that, you guys. On change, come on. On change, okay. And um, so what we're gonna have is event. And then we're gonna set our email to event.target.value. There we go. Come on now, come on. All right, let's change. And, um, mm -mm. and we just wanna say set password and dot target that value cool all right now i'm just gonna refresh that get rid of all those errors so what was it email at test.com and then i set this as password and weak strong come on auth wrong password what did i okay you know right here i'm just gonna say email at that's what it was test.com Okay, email at test.com, that's what it is. So email at test.com and then password. And we don't have it uh, forwarding us anywhere yet, so it should just sit here. But boom, yeah, so it logged us in. But hey, let's add in this navigate, right? Because navigate, we wanna navigate into, let's go to the account page. Make sure I spell that right. And I'm just gonna see if it'll do this now. Boom, so there we go. Go to the account page and now we can successfully Log out, boom, so there we go. 
All right, you guys, smash that like button if you're using Firebase Authentication for the first time now. So let's look at what we've done so far. Basically, we can create a new user with the email and password. We can sign in that user. We can log out the user. We have the on off state change function so we can determine whether or not the user is logged in. And then we can actually forward using React Router DOM. So what we also, what we want to do next, um, or what we don't want to be able to do that we can do is go to this account page. So that doesn't make any sense to be able to access the account page unless we're logged in. So let's take care of that right now. We're going to back, go back to our code editor and we're going to take care of that with a protected route. So let's go into our components folder. We're going to create a new file called protected route.js. Okay. And I'm going to say RFCE here to get our functional component. And what we want to do, we want to be able to do two things. We want to be able to um, navigate to another page in here if we're not logged in. And we also need to access our user. So we want to import, and this is from navigate, a capital, capital navigate there. And this is going to be from React Router DOM. And then next we need our our context. So user and that's gonna be from our context folder. There we go. Context auth, there we go. Alright, so what we need to do is first define our user. So I'm gonna say const user is equal to our user auth function. There we go. Now what we want to say here is simple if statement and if if there's no user we want to return the navigate this is going to be wrapped in opening brackets there navigate to to our home page and our home page is where our logging component is boom there we go and this is actually just going to be this can just be self closing there we go and if not we're just going to return our children and we're going to leave this destructure here so we'll just pass it in at the top there we go so let's go ahead and save that make sure there's no errors perfect now one more thing we need to do we need to go into our app there we go and close some of these and to make this a protected route we need to find the component or the the route the page that we want to protect and that's the account uh component right there so what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna give some space some space here i'm gonna add in my protected route like so then i'm just gonna cut this and put it right in the middle there. And once we save that, uh oh, what I grab? There we go. Just need to grab that right there. And let's just throw it inside the protected route. And so, I don't even think we need that. There we go. What do I do here? I'm gonna go. Sorry guys, I'm gonna go back here. So I'm just gonna cut that account. Okay, cut that, and let's import our protected route. There we go. And we'll paste that in between there. There we go. All right. So no errors. <laughs> Let's go in and check our account page and it should just automatically bounce us out of there. Boom. So you saw it, it flashed the accounts page and then it flashed us to the uh, login to our, to our homepage there. So let's check this out. Let's create a new user here. I'm going to say email at free.com password is going to be password. Let's sign in. Boom. There we are. Let's log out and let's see if we can, Log back in, email at free.com, password is password, and it should take us right to the account page. Perfect. Boom, log out, and then we're gone. So there you go. have it, you guys. Firebase Authentication version 9 in React.js. Thanks for watching. Make sure you smash that like button, and consider subscribing to my channel. I'm going to be putting out some more React content just like this here in the near future. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you on the next one.